Hello! This is the second tutorial video about the His Tools Impulse Response Toolbox. In the first video, we covered how to create an impulse response. In the second video, we're going to learn how to correct for different loudspeakers by compensating for the frequency response resulting from their interaction with the acoustic space. In order to do this, we first need to capture some impulse responses of the speakers. Because we want to correct for more than one ideal sweet spot, we're going to capture more than one speaker from more than one position. Because of how the impulse response toolbox is built, this is much easier to do than it sounds. Let's take a look inside the patch to see what objects we're going to be using to create the IRs. The measurement part of the patch is more or less identical to the patch that we used in the first video. There's some additional objects and sections that we'll use to process the IRs once we've captured them, but for the moment we only need to capture the IRs. So our patch is ready to go. For this setup, we'll be correcting a pair of Mackie SRM450s. The frequency response of the Mackies is not as flat as something like the Genelec 1037s we've used in previous videos. As in our first video, we want the microphones to be as flat as possible, so we'll be using a matched pair of DPA4006s. It's possible to correct using less ideal microphones, but we would need to compensate for those microphones during the process. This is something we'll be covering in a later video. Since we have two microphones and two speakers, we'll end up with four IRs. Because of how the HISS toolbox is set up, we only need to play back one sweep per speaker, so in our case, two sweeps. Now that we have all our sweeps, let's go back to the patch and see what we need to do with them. Here we have the IRs from IR Measure. Unlike the previous video where we wanted to capture the sound of the physical space, we actually need to do more with these IRs. We've captured the sound of the Mackie speakers, but we don't want to apply that to something else. What we want to do is create an IR that will correct for that sound. The first thing we need to do is crop the IR. Since we're trying to correct the color of the room loudspeaker combination, we want to remove the late reflections and focus the correction on the early reflections and the direct sound itself, as that's what makes up most of what we think of as the sound. This is the sound of the IR as it originally was. Here is the cropped version. It's a bit too subtle for the compressed video, but here's an exaggerated example so you can hear exactly what's happening. You can hear that most of the sound of the room is gone. The next step is averaging and smoothing the IRs. If we were to take only one IR, it could have some anomalies, which would make for a less than ideal correction. Since we have two per speaker, we will average them together. This next step is one of the most important steps and requires a bit of fine tuning to get the best results. This is regularization. Since we will be inverting the IR, we will essentially be flipping an EQ curve upside down. Imagine what would happen if we were to do this with a speaker with little to no bass or highs. That would produce an overcompensated IR, which will not only sound bad, but could also put the speakers under unnatural strain. Practically, what you really need to do is make sure the extreme registers are not overcorrected. Here we can see if I invert the IR with the default settings, what we get is a really overcompensated bass and treble. If we tried playing this back on the Mackies, the lows and the highs would sound terrible. 
and the Mackie can't even produce frequencies this low. Here I have some settings that will work a lot better. So we can see that the overcompensated bass and highs are gone. Now this looks like we're actually scooping out a lot of the bass, but in reality the Mackie isn't producing anything below this point anyways. Next we need to make the IR minimum phase. When we averaged the IRs, we threw away all of the phase information, and the default correction is linear phase. This introduces latency, which is half the length of the impulse response. In the studio this is fine, but for live use we want the energy to be as early as possible in the resultant filter, to minimize the delay. The final step involves truncating, fading, and normalizing the IR. For the most part you can just use the preset values for this. The His Toolbox was built to be robust, so you can really do a lot with each object, although for most applications, you don't really need to go that deep into each object. So let's listen to the correction. This sounds pretty good, punchier in the mid bass and overall less boxy. You'll find that the worse your speakers are, the more effective the correction is, yet with speakers with a flatter response, the correction is still heard as an improvement of the image, correcting mostly the issues of the room. Here's a corrected Mackie as compared to a Genelec 1037. Pretty close for a Mackie. So this was correcting a speaker to have a flat response. What if we don't want to have a flat response? Once we correct the speaker, we can apply an IR of another speaker type. For example, a guitar cabinet. or through a telephone. In our first video, we learned how to create an impulse response of an acoustic space. In the second video, we built on that by correcting for the sound of the speakers in an acoustic space. Hopefully, you can start to see how modular and robust the His Impulse Response Toolbox really is. Love me.